Oh yeah, it's gonna be one of those sessions. <laughs> exactly, so, because I know that apparently, I can see in this program that it's now 4.30 to 5.30, and after that, as far as I know, there's something with alcohol. So the only thing that is between you and party is me. But that's not actually the big problem today. It's actually the other way around. The only thing that's between me and a big ass drink is you guys. So, um, so let's start this thing. Um, because we are now at the, uh, this is my second schnitzel con, also known in my world as Glühwein Fest. Um, so that is, I'm very happy to be invited again. Um, I, apparently I did something right last time, but that's always good. So we're gonna talk about Drupal 8 today, Drupal 8.0. This is the first time I can do that because I've always talked about a release candidate or pre-alpha, alpha, alpha, alpha. This is also in my world known as better one, but don't say that to anybody. So my name is Morten. Uh, I have a company in Copenhagen called Geek Royale. I also work for Tag One Consulting, which is basically a bunch of nerds. So I'm the only one of the only front ends there. That's a good thing, because I can then ask them dumb stuff, and then they will answer that for me. Um, I also have a column called The Angry Thema in the Drupal Watchdog, where I've talked a lot about these things. And I've been um, perfecting the act of anchor-driven development over the last couple of years, which is pretty much being so pissed off about how Drupal 7 works, so you take all that hatred and then you create something positive in it. I know it sounds like hippie fucking crap, but I'm a metalhead, so believe me, and I'm out up there from the north where we used to rule with an iron fist and stuff, but we don't do anymore because something, something. And by the way, I'm also a classy maintainer, hence the tie. All right, so. And here's the other thing, um, modern DK, DK is not for Denmark, it's for the div killer. That's been my, uh, my, my, my only big contribution to Jubal 8. It was my 69 patch I got in, where we killed the Vitus once and for all. So when you, at some point, how many have worked with Jubal 8 yet? Okay, good. So the rest of you, this is like a, a virgin travel into Jubal 8's markup and theme. Huh? You, what, by the way, if I talk too fast or too loud or say something you don't get, just, just yell out. Unless, of course, you're from Finland, then you're not allowed. So, because we're going to go a little bit south right now. We're going to talk about the Stockholm Syndrome that we have in Drupal 7. Stockholm Syndrome is nothing about the Swedish chef or IKEA, which is also known as the Swedish Temple of Doom. It's actually this. This is Drupal 7 markup, <laughs> right? And this is known as a feature. Divitis is a feature, also known as feature-rich markup, which we have themers in Drupal 7 defending. Um, do you all know what Stockholm Syndrome is? That's what happens when you've been capped. You suddenly begin to sympathize with your captures. This is when 5,000 lines of PHP template is perfectly okay to make my theme work. This is when the class soup, yo, six fucking classes of everything, is suddenly yet another feature that I can reuse. It's apparently a good thing. Some of us, we took this angle, be like, you know what? Stop this, stop this, no more. You know, we need to change this in Jubilee. 8. Actually, we need to change everything. So, hello, trick, and goodbye to PHP template. Because um, in Jubilee 8, theme functions is dead. And how dead? This dead. This is the last theme function we killed in, um, in about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, in, in San Francisco, is it three weeks ago? San Francisco, bad camp, a month? Jesus Christ. Okay, a month ago, the last theme function got killed in, um, in San Francisco. That was a glorious day. We're sitting outside, and suddenly we got like, oh, wait a minute. Can we kill the last function? And actually, the whole front end group was, was in, collected at that point, and WebChick was sitting in the corner. like, yeah, why not? We're like, okay, and what should the commit message be? Die theme function? Die. Because um, in Drupal 8, what's happening here is like everything turns into be a template. We have about 150 templates in Drupal 8. You're going to hate me for that later on. But you know, one kind of hate to the other. So, um, But everything is a template because one of the things we want to make sure about is that the theme is completely under control of the markup and the CSS. You know, so people who want to create something that we didn't do but Drupal out of the box can create that now. Um, so here's the first lesson we're going to do today. We're going to unlearn PHP template. So you close your eyes. Close your eyes. Think about all the good things you did in there with PHP in Drupal 8 and Drupal 7. Think about all that awesome, awesome stuff you did. Does it feel good? Yeah, there's somebody who's drunk in the corner. <laughs> 
Okay, good. So now we're ready for this. This is Trick for Drupal 8. And Trick is pretty simple. It's a modern template. I love when you say modern about code. It's modern. So next year, it's not modern. It's maybe seniorish. But right now, it's modern template language built on Symfony and built other systems using it. Basically, it's really, really easy to understand because this is what you need to learn. So the first thing up there, that's how you get a variable out. That's how you get your data out. The next one here, that's how you comment your code out. You know, so when you're kind of like, what am I actually doing here? I don't really know, but let me just put it into a comment so I don't forget my code later on. Save. That's how I do that. And this down here is when you put functionality into your theme. Um, back in Drupal 7, when you had to do a drilling through a variable, it was like something like this. So it ended up being kind of a clusterfuck, kind of hard to figure out where it went. What we can do now in Drupal 8 instead is we're using this uh, drilling in, so you can go like data is here. So you will drill into the variables. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a, if 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 it's an array or it's an object, which you know in Drupal 7 you had to know, so you had to like guess your way through it. Here is actually some kind of logic in it. You will see multiple chances of extreme amount of logic used into Drupal 8 theming, which we know is not a thing we used to do in Drupal 7, but we're now trying to put that in. Um, another thing you can do, if you have a variable, you can do fun stuff with it. So basically, you have a pipe. You have a variable, and you pipe it. That, that, that's that green thing. And then you go like, OK, make something pretty, some kind of function that could do something to the data. That could be, you know, do an uppercase. And by the way, this is wrong. It should say only upper. It's not uppercase, because I'm an idiot. But this will then make, you know, whatever string this username is, make that into uppercase. Um, we also have put translate in in a new way. So you can have a pipe on a, um, on a variable or a piece of data, and then you do a T on it, and then you have it suddenly translatable. Or you can do this thing, where you grab it around, you go trans and enter trans, and then you can put variables and shit directly in, and it just puts it out. So we don't have to do all that fun thing about figuring out where, where did my first plane and my second plane go in, and having that level of, of headache to do translations. Um, Control functionality is pretty easy here. Here we go, look. You know, if the person uh, is modern, he really loves Drupal 8, else he's not an awesome Viking, which is you guys. Sorry for that. Miggle a little bit, but you've escaped the country, so you're not allowed on my long ship anymore. Hey, there's rules here. Um, another thing we can do, which you're going to see a little bit later on, is really, really sweet. We can create variables. <gasps> variables. We can create our own little variables inside of our template files. And there's probably a developer or two in the room who are like, why do you need your own variables? We will come to that. Um, so I can do you know, set a variable called foo, give it to a bar. Then if I do foo, it will give me a bar out. That's how you set a variable. Um, we're going to come to that a little bit later on. And you know, don't panic. If you are a developer and you think, well, this is this trick thing. It's not PHP anymore. It's going to be slow. It's going to be blah, blah, blah. That's actually not how it works, because trick is you know, this magic thing that us in the front end who like to work with markup and CSS and a little bit of JavaScript and make stuff pretty, we don't have to think about this PHP stuff because by magic, by somebody, all of this stuff gets stored as PHP and then delivered to your site. So the whole panic level of <gasps> trick is slow. No, it's not. Um, but the first time you come in, one of the biggest changes we actually made was changing uh, base themes. Remember in Drupal 7, you had base themes. Of course, we changed everything around that just to make sure that everybody in the room was confused and do not know where to start. Um, but there's a reason for that. Um, so this is Drupal 7. You have Drupal Core, and Drupal Core put everything out. Here's all your stuff. Work with that and be happy. Um, the problem with that is it was really hard for us to modify stuff, really hard to change things around, change the classes around, move it around. So in Drupal 8, what we're doing now is we're pretty much piping all of this crap into a new theme called Classy. And Classy is where all the classes and all the basic markup that Drupal 7 pretty much put out, all that stuff is moved into the Classy theme. So that is what we you say was like your basic markup. Um, what the, what's, why is that sneaky? And we even have a, a theme more. By the way, I was told two years ago that there would be no new themes in Drupal 8. And we've, god damn it, pushed two new in right in the middle of it. Um, but they're actually really unsexy, by the way. They're just protecting ourselves from ourselves. Um, so we have a new theme called Stable. 
stable because that is the stable markup that Drupal puts out, the minimum markup. Then we have classy, and inside of classes where all of the default classes come, they're like classes that you can trust, that if you just want to build a module that does something, you can just build on that. Um, and then you have uh, seven and Bardic as base themes that will then build on that. Um, so why is that sneaky? Well, the sneaky thing is here, stable, what does it give you? Absolutely nothing. Gives you a couple of divs, a section tag, an article tag, and the most the variables that you need to have, like and about class names, like uh, is visible. Elements that are crucial for Drupal to work will also be in there. That will be, you know, class names. Um, where Classy will have you know, all your classes defined in them. So now you can begin to say, well, say, hey, I don't want to build on Drupal's basic markup. I want to build my own thing. Well, then you just say, I go with stable, so I'm sure what's going to happen, and then I build on top of this. Um, another thing we changed, and this is a thing that is very important for you guys now to remember, 7 and Bardic used to be a part of, like, you know, a thing you could trust, a thing you can build on top of. Not anymore. Um, 7 and Bardic has now uh, been put in as being an internal project. It's part of the Drupal project, which means that uh, 7 and Bardic, if you want to use that as a base theme, you should practically copy it all, clone it all, and move it into your own theme. The reason for that is we want to be able to improve on Bardic. We want to be able to improve of 7 and do whatever we figure out and we as the community that we want to build on. Because what happened in Drupal 7, if you remember that five years ago when it came out, though everything was good. Seven theme was in the back end. We were all happy. Then about four months later, some idiot wrote a book that was yellow about responsive design. And somebody took their phone up and looked at it like, why can I not do anything on my beautiful Drupal site with this seven theme, why can't we just make it responsive? We cannot make it responsive. We could not change anything in it because we had no idea how many themes were relying on this. How much would we break? So this is just a fair warning that if you use seven or body, we will break it um, because we want to be able to move forward. And if you're seeing all of here now, we have stable and we have classy as two themes that is not inside of Drupal core which means that we can now work on Drupal Core and do whatever the fuck we want to do in Drupal Core without breaking anything, which is the third model. So when you start your new theme, you say, okay, my base theme is going to be what? Stable, that is no markup, just a bunch of divs, and that's it. Classy, which is, you know, a fuck ton of classes and all that stuff. Or you can go base theme false. Base theme false means that you trust whatever we do directly in Core. So when Drupal 8... 0.001 comes out at some point, and we have changed three template files somewhere. Now, there's not going to be a warning for you. We're just going to change it because you should use one or the other. But if you're like an idiot like me, you're probably going to do that. The reason for this is we want to be able to improve on core all along because we know whatever we did right now, a lot of this code is actually a year old. How many of us actually believe that we know how the, what the future brings? One thing we learned in Drupal 7, that's not how it is. So this is you know, basically how it works, but Stable or classy is going to be your two, two places they're going to go into. Um, and here's another thing. When you come into this, um, if you want to figure out where they're building it, go into core, themes, and then classy. That's where you have these themes in. Um, as a side note, we're starting two new projects on the side, which is going to live out in Contrib, which is going to be classy Contrib and stable Contrib. And the reason for that is that we want to be able to also improve on classy and stable as we learn new techniques of figuring out, hey, we could change the menu items to something else, or there's new stuff coming out in the market we want to be able to. So there's going to be two new projects started out, pretty much maintained by the same people who's also maintaining in core. So we can keep on improving so we don't end up with this like never-ending story that we had in Drupal uh, 7. So base themes, you know, fuck it, base theme falls. You're just going to roll with whatever punches that comes. And if you break your site, you know, on that day where you're at Drupal Con somewhere and everything dies, well, that's not our fault. You were warned. Um, so basically, you decide which way you're going to go and build on that. Um, another thing we got now in Drupal 7 is pretty amazing because back in uh, Drupal 8, back in Drupal 7, the amount of like dedicated front-enders who was like working on the theme system was not that much. We actually now have a pretty big group of, I think we're, Laura, how many are we now? Eight, ten people? Yeah, so we have five maintainers of the system plus five, six, and a couple of others on the side who is helping out with maintaining the base theme system. So we actually have now you know, about, about 10 people who's actually caring about the front end. Back in Drupal 7, 
the only one who cared about the front end in the Hussein Khan trip was John Albin, who then somehow got me pushed into it. And now he's pointing at me because everything that's going to be wrong in Drupal 8 is apparently my fault. Because I once drunken kind of accused him of being responsible for everything that was wrong in Drupal 7, so fair payback. Okay, so how do we set this up? Um, first of all, Here's extreme logic. When you go into a new, newly built Drupal 8 site, what you're going to do is you're going to look into this folder called themes. We all remember Drupal 7 or 6 or 5 or old idiots like me, 4.7. When you looked into that folder called themes where you thought you should put your thing in and you should not, that has now changed. So the future people who don't know about all Drupal 7 dumbness can now go to Drupal 8 instead and just drop your stuff into slash themes. Same thing with slash modules, so nobody will laugh at you when you do this. This is actually where they should live. You can still put it inside slash all slash blah, 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 but this is actually where it should live. Um, I'm going to have five, four uh, config files that's interesting. Uh, I'm going to run through them pretty fast. The info file is pretty much as we knew it from Drupal 7. Uh, you have some basic info on it. We have some libraries. We're going to come to them. That's pretty sexy. We have something about removing CSS, which is one of my favorites. Um, and then we have like defining regions and doing stuff like that. Um, and and you know, when you go on the remove stuff, you can be into like, you have to actually call it like, oh, define them all the way out so we actually know where the CSS file lives. So you're not going to have these obscure strange errors that if you have a module over here that has a CSS file and then you put your own CSS file in, you kind of over began to overwrite that or you did the FOAD technique. So uh, try to make it like usable to, to read. Um, libraries, what a library does is it adding CSS and JavaScript to your site. Um, so it goes pretty much like this. You have an info file. Uh, which calls some kind of library. And that library has all kinds of stuff built over here. The good thing of this is a library you can call from wherever you want. Modules can call libraries, and your theme can call libraries. Actually, your template files can call libraries. So if you know, if I'm on the, you know, some, uh, let's the, my site is not working right now template file, and I want to put in specific CSS, I can separate that out into a CSS file or a JavaScript file and put that in. Or, you know, if I have my slider, because sliders are fucking awesome because it's just big GIF animations, um, you can put in all your CSS and your JavaScript there. You don't have to transport that around to all of your pages. Um, basically, what you do with your info file, you go like, hey, here's my global. Let me define it down here. Global has a version. It has some theme stuff, which is my CSS, some JavaScript, and this baby, dependency called jQuery. Dependencies are pretty sweet, because we used to have these like 32 kilos of hot jQuery love that we carried around all around our themes, no matter if you use jQuery or not. And removing that, you normally required you know, at least one virgin sacrificed at full moon and uh, a sexy dance at a bar to get that removed. Now we can just don't declare it. If you don't declare that in your info file or your library file, no jQuery, yeah, which is pretty sweet. Um, uh, 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 ding. So, um, and another thing we can do, if you have a library that's already defined, you can go in and replace it as well, or you can begin to remove it completely. So let's say we have modernizer built into Drupal 8 right now. I don't want to have that. Just going to remove it all. Or I have you know, a specific CSS file that I know is there. I don't want to have that in my theme. Falls, done, move it out. So what we're trying to do is all the stuff that we used to do in a PHP template file, in a pre-process, the dark magic and all that stuff, trying to move it out so we can actually, as normal human beings who has a normal life, who doesn't sit down in a basement. How many developers is in the room, by the way? <laughs> OK, enough to beat the shit out of me. So I should uh, stop, stop calling them little sad nerds who sit in their basements and come up with schemes to piss me off, right? Nice developers who helps us out building better and better sites. That's the correct name for them, yes. Um, CSS organizing is another thing we have built in. We're following the Smacks uh, way of doing it. Everybody know what Smacks is? Three or four people know what Smacks is. Okay, those of you who doesn't know that, you have to learn because it is sweet as fuck. It is going to make your CSS make sense. Less headache and more awesome source. Um, the whole idea is that you split up your CSS files in a specific way. So you have base layout, component, state, and theme. I'm not going to explain that right now. What? <laughs> so 
And to quote Lowry, who actually knows what he talks about instead of me, who's just talking about like making new class names, is that yes, there is an issue on that, how to improve on this. This the reason that we go to Smacks and the reason that we go with BEM naming as well is like we needed to have a standard when we begin to like reform this whole new theme system. And at that point, BEM class naming was the only thing that was really, really well documented. Um, the way that uh, Smack CSS does the whole file organization and, and um, select organization was begin to look like what would become de facto standard in the web industry. So we went with those things. If you don't like it, here's the fucking awesome thing. You just don't use it. That's the whole thing because everything now gets done inside of your template file. So you built your new theme, you go like, you know more than that BEM shit you put down on me? Fuck that, out the door. That form of like class name, I don't want to have one CSS file. I don't care about all this crap. And I'm gonna put it into, and what's, what's that called, that new hot thing the new kid's using? That Node.js something, compiling files. Oh yeah, SAS. That SAS thing that you young people use. I mean, I'm old school, I'm back to vanilla CSS. Because I'm a badass motherfucker. Um, another thing we have now in our themes, which I really, really like, is breakpoints is now defined in your theme instead of laying somewhere else because why would you have that in a config? It should be in your theme. We don't even have an interface for it, we have this. Bam, a YAML file. Now your theme packs the sizes of your images. I know, extreme amount of logic that actually makes sense in the real world. Um, and then when people begin to slate, they get this. Yes, I went ape shit with a theme called Uktrasil because something, something Viking and stuff. Um, if you really have a, a heart, like more than what, where's my PHP? I want my PHP. You can still have your PHP in your .theme file and there's still use, just come in. Yes, <laughs> there's room somewhere. So you, you still have, if you want to put stuff in, drop in a variable, uh, put in a theme uh, template suggestion, you can still do that. Um, another actually, I'm working on a theme right now called Vanilla, where I'm trying to like, expand on stuff all around. And I found uh, multiple places where it's actually really useful. But let's go to the, here's, here's another killer feature, tools and how you find stuff. Basically, what you do first when you start up your new site. Um, I've done a video where I explain this, like a five minute YouTube video, have a link for it at the very end, how I'm setting up my whole development thing. But what you do is, you go into your sites and you take example settings, dot local PHP, you move that over to your site's default settings local, uh, and then you uncomment this thing, which is at the very bottom of the page, you uncomment that, and you then you know, rebuild your site and then magic will happen. You will not be caught up in this never ending loop of caching. Almost because fields have a certain tendency, at least on my side, to like cast themselves forever, which drives me batshit. But it should work. And another thing you want to do as well is download Devel. And uh, you install Devel, you install Kint. Kint is kind of the, uh, what was it called in Drupal 7? Um, yeah, Kumo. Kint is Kumo for Drupal 8. So that's what you need to know about that. And, and another thing you really want to do, because some brilliant person figured out, hey, let's disable, let's enable CSS cache from the first build on, because that's what we really want. I do not know why this is. I saw that and I was about to go in on one of my famous never ending rants, and I figured out there was more important stuff to use my next three weeks of my life on. So also remember to go in and disable your CSS cache, else all your CSS files will be you know, cached. So let's, let's look at this in, in you know, a, a life environment. So I've, if I go into my services file, you have this debug under trick and you have cache, you set debug to true and you set cache to false. Um, and if I now go in, I've not yet reloaded my site, I go in here, look at my markup. Remember in Drupal 7 when we had to find something, I guess this is a note that puts it out. Okay, let me look if there's a class called note. Oh yeah, there's a class called something stupid. I'm pretty sure there's a function somewhere that does that, like the wonderful HTML class that we have on the body tag because that class we all needed. Um, so check this out. This is view source after you've enabled this. So let's, uh, let's jump in here, one more part. Here I'm viewing my source and, and look at this. File name suggestions. Okay, what goes on here? Let's, let's see. First of all, it explains to me where I'm at. This actually says, in my system, where's my template file hidden at? So now you can find that. Um, let's actually go one more back. And another thing here, the, where the X is, this is the template that's in use. So if you wanna overwrite this in your own template, in your own theme, what you just do is you copy this file, and you have the file down here, so you basically just copy that, 
and put it on your own theme, reload the page, and bam, now you have your new template. So you can actually find your stuff. It had been wonderful for me for many, many years. So every time I have to change anything for a client, I could pretty much invoice them for an hour because that was how long it took to find anything. It's been job security for Drupal themers for years to figure out where stuff came from. Um, so we know that you now actually have to do like real work to get your payment. Um, that's both good and bad. But um, so, and, and if we go to the, to the next little thing, it's like what Kint does. Um, oh, that was a little bit fast. Come. Here we go. Um, so the, the reason that we did this was like, we want to make sure that it should be as easy for you as possible to figure out where stuff come from. Um, holy shit, what's going on here? Here we go. Bam. So when you begin to use Kint, you can actually find your things kind of easy. This is not good enough yet. It's good enough to find stuff. It's still a pain in the ass to find things in it because we have so much data coming out. If anybody want to help out make this a better tool so we only print out the stuff we need for themers, we would love to see that. But it was not a, that was not a stopper for getting Drupal 8.0 out. Uh, let's put it that way. So basically, what, what can you do with that? Because what you want to work with very fast on is you're going to work in with your fields and figure out what that comes out. This is how you find those field names and be able to print them out. Remember that, what I said with the dot notation? Now you have the old content variable. If you just do content dot, no field image, you're gonna print out the field image. So that's the way you're gonna figure that out. Um, you can go all kinds of other ways as well uh, and, and get the same data out. Um, so different ways of getting the same data out. This is a tool that should be improved, but right now it at least gives us access to it. Um, so basically, services file, you wanna change that. Draw CR, use Kint to find your stuff, and you have all your templates there, and you can find the templates. You're gonna find templates that's all the way down in core, but you can still find them because there's no theme functions anymore. It's all somewhere in a template, which is pretty awesome. Um, so we have 100 and I think I said 35, probably 150 templates because I haven't counted for a while. We have a ton of templates um, because you know we, we nuked them into an official and metric fuck ton of templates. Um, so if you go into the classic theme and you see what, what we've got in there, another thing we begin to talk about was actually it's very, very hard to figure out where stuff comes from because all the old theme uh, names was converted over to the file names. So some of the things is a little bit maybe harder to find. So we created a file structure inside of, of classy, the classic theme where it's actually built in. Um, and it's grouped into like what we've at that point thought would be logical templates. The good thing is you can move them around in your own theme as you want to. So if you just want to build this, you know, clone classy and just build on that. Um, when we begin to look at the templates, it's built pretty much the same way as we did in Drupal 8, Drupal 7. So you have the HTML, you have the page, you have regions, and inside of these regions, um, you know, we have different elements. It can be you know, a view or a node or a block or whatever. You can also have a, a view inside of a block and so forth. And now we come into the node, and that's where it gets really, really fun. This is where the fields are. This is where the data comes out. And this is where the old dreaded divisors comes in. Um, and we have all of the fields, and there is a lot of them. The good thing is they're all grouped by what type they are. Um, and we're going to talk about them a little bit later. First on, we're going to do layouts inside of our template. Um, and here is Trick Magic, developed by the Trick Army Gods. And what this does, it gives you the opportunity to print out all the data out of a variable, like content, but remove a couple of them. Why is that sneaky? Well, because you want to shift stuff around. So I do a pipe and then without some kind of field name. Um, and there's a reason for this. So here's my, here's my layout, right? I want to build this kind of layout so you can imagine how the divs or the wrappers or the aside and the section would be in there. I still says div because that is the basic elements to build in. So normally, when I print stuff out now as the content variable, the content will be printed out and it will have like text and tags and images inside of it and how do I split that out? Well, Drupal 7, you would do that with all kinds of dumb things or in Drupal 6, you would put in contemplate or you put in display suite on top of it or whatever you do. Here we just do it inside of the template and I do it like, so I go and say content, give me the content but without the image. And then I can take my image and print that variable in another place in my template. Um, and I can do the same thing with the text. So here comes the sneaky thing. This is now, you know, 
This is my very first version of this template I put out to my client, and I'm out of the shop, and you know, the, the developer guys are working on it, guys and girls are working on it, and I'm now on vacation. And they put in a new field because the client want to have you know, a voting. They will have a vote field we need to put in. In 7, what happened when we did that in Drupal 7, you know, I would just remove the content variable and print each variable out inside of the template and be done with it. The problem there is, if you put in a new template, there's no way it can print itself out. We can do that now, because when you print out content, it prints out everything that's inside of content, but not these specific fields. So now you get complete control over it. So if you print that out, put a new field in it, doesn't care, just prints that out with the rest of it. Um, and this, it kind of looked like this. So here I have content without your know, links, field image, and field tags. And here I have my content field image. And up here I have my tags. And be done with that. <sighs> now we come to the fields. And one of the things, one of the reasons that we had divisions for so long in Jules actually, it, fields are pretty, pretty complicated. Um, because this is where all data come out. No matter where you go inside of Drupal, it will be a field somehow. It's a little bit of like a, a couple of places that's not, but it's basically all fields. So here's my question. How many diffs does it take to make a single field with one value? Four, five, six, seven, something like that. Okay. And it looks like this, right? A field and it got a single yo inside of it. Yo. Okay, this is Drupal 7. Bam. This is how everything looks in Drupal 7. This is how everything is built up. Okay, this is Drupal 8. Classy. Why does it do that? Well, we have defined, as you can see here, it has different ways of defining what's a field, field item, and field items. It different ways that we're trying to like create default markup for you. Drupal 7, we cleaned it up a little bit. Um, but if I want to do this, no one div zero class is 100% Drupal. It should be able to do that also on a specific element. Um, I can even go YOLO if I wanted to do that. So um, how do we do that? Well, first of all, great modern. You can remove all the divs. Hooray, because that's in a template. What should I use that for? Well, the idea is here you can do on each field exactly what you want. You can take a single field. You can take all image fields, um, all text fields and so forth because they got a template. Um, so basically the question, the answer to this is like whatever you want and how to do that. Well, here's the thing. Field markups is defined in four different variations. Because a field is a label and a value. That's how all fields are defined. Um, it looks like this. You have a single one. You have a single with a label. You have multiple values with have no labels on. And then you have multiple values with a label. That's the four variations of a piece of data we can put out. One of the problems we had in Drupal 7 was there's nobody from the front end world who sat themselves down and said, what kind of variations do we have? And actually, I started this discussion about two years ago up in Stockholm. And then I flew all the way to New Zealand and all the way to the US and back and forth. And I even think we discussed it here two years ago. Um, trying to figure out, is there other variations of this? How do, we actually, how do we look at data, and how should the data be presented? Um, and it goes like this. Um, if we have four different variations of it, why do we then print out the exact same markup? Nobody had an answer to that, besides of, well, we want consistency. And I'm like, well, consistency, that's, that's all good, but I mean, it's not the same data, especially not when you suddenly have managed the displays as well on top of it. It's different ways that we present different kind of data. We need to be able to move that around. Because um, we have an inline, we have an above, we have an normal hidden. So if I go and I look at now my field HTML, when you open up that the first time, you might going to be a little bit like, what the fuck? Why is there all these things? This I cannot figure it out. Molten, you're evil. Why did you do this? Well. If you, if you just want to have our basic markup, just use it as it is and don't think about it. It's nicely classified. You have little classes on everything. But you can you know, do pretty sweet things with it. Because what we've done is we basically say, well, first of all, we're going to test on if it's the label or not. Or if there's not, then we're going to give you these two options of it. This is the markup. Or, and if there is a label, well, then we give you these two other options down here. And now you can begin to define your markup inside of each of these. You can even go a step further and put that into separate templates if you want to. But that's all kind of like how you want to work with it. So we basically go in and test on this on each template file. And then now you can begin to build your markup patterns that says, hey, if I'm an image, 
I shouldn't have a diff wrapped around me. If I'm an image, I have a figure checker around it. If I'm a, uh, if I, if I'm a bunch of text elements, I pretty much want to have a section wrapped around it. If I want to have, the, if I'm really into accessibility and want to do something epic somewhere, I think there's one in the room over there. I think, no, there he is. Uh, no, you want to do something specific because now I need to describe my field in a certain way. Now you can do that. And if you put that in somewhere, you're not going to like involve that in everything else. Um, so we can begin to do these things. So that's all good. You can put in different markups. And you killed a few diffs more, and that's all good and happy, happy. Well, let's look at attributes, because attributes, that's where it's really at. Attributes is where we, for real now, can begin to describe all the things. So inside of all these tags, you're going to have this attributes thing in here. And one of the things it does, it describes the classes, and we want to work with that. We actually want to work with all of it and move it around. Um, Drupal 7 did it like this. Here's all your classes. Have fun. Try to remove them. But ha, 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 Morton, you can build your wonderful little mothership that pretty much override everything, and you can hate life forever. No. So that was one of the things we really want to change um, in Drupal 8. So what we're doing here, everything is available, got pushed in to the classy theme, which then defined all these classes. <gasps> that means and this shit is fucking awesome, that you now add your class inside of the template where the class lives. I know, shocking amount of logic puts in here. So if you look at this really fast, up here it said set classes, field, and then something with a tilde, field name, and clean class. Clean class, what it does, it takes the variable, whatever you put in here, and makes sure it you know, doesn't do dumb things like putting a space in or maybe using an emoji, which I still haven't tried yet, but I really want to try to do class names with emojis just because I can. Um, so down here, we go attributes, add class, and then classes. And that means that the classes that comes out down in, my, in, in the specific, specific piece of markup will now have exactly the classes that I want to put in. Um, if I want to remove a class, because you know, dumb module somewhere put in a class, you know, like bad Canadian. Bad Canadian module have put in the class Nickelback inside of my theme. Nobody want to have Nickelback inside of the theme, right? So how do I remove Nickelback? How do I get this, this thing out? Well, you know, Drupal Core puts out classes that is really, really necessary, like is visible. There's like core functionality we want to have in. Um, then we have, you know, piece of shit module puts in Nickelback class. Like, God damn it, it does a variable attribute, so your module can still put classes in if you want to. Really get them over to the theme so we can find them afterwards. But, you know, evil module puts in Nickelback cla class. And last thing is my theme comes in here and does the attributes that add class and then whatever theme class. If I want to kill attributes, if I want to kill Nickelback, what I do is I'm going to do the remove instead and can remove that. So. Nope. Remove class. Done. No more niggle back. So now this is the how you remove your class if they come in there. The good thing is what we've seen so far, what I hope that module developers really get, is that put all your stuff out in the template where it should live. It's going to make your life so much easier. You don't have to think about what classes is these front-end people want. You don't have to think about that anymore. You just give us the variables. We're going to take care of the rest. Um, there's a little thing here. If you use JavaScript for anything, you're going to prefix that motherfucker with a JS. Because if there's one thing we're tired of is suddenly you remove a class somewhere or you override a class, you set it to display block or inline or clear fix, whatever you do, suddenly something broke. I mean, I broke Views' Ajax uh, um, no, pagination for about six months with a version of the mothership because I removed all the classes. Because there's no way it could explain to me you know, is this actually used by anything? So if you have a class that is needed for JavaScript, prefix it with JS. Don't put colors and functionality into it. Create another class that has that. So if you have you know, your foo module and it has this foo class it needs, have the foo class to have all the pretty, the big three pixel red border uh, in, and then JS foo is where you're gonna, gonna do the display or whatever you wanna do with that. Um, Simply because then we can find it later on. Because Drupal is fucking huge. I mean, how big, how big is Drupal 8 built right now? 16 megabytes when you download it? That's a fuck ton of text. That's not big as pretty images. So for us to figure, find these things later on is a real pain in the ass. So do that, please. Um, clean class, yes, we got to that. So any, am I the only one who got the rush thing? Come on. 
oh, God damn it, this is a top foul. Anyways, um, you have your remove class, your add class, and your, your set attribute is pretty sweet. So if you want to add in an attribute somewhere, like, um, you want because you want to use it for some JavaScript stuff, whatever you want to do with it, you can just add that in as you need it to. So here I actually want to add in an ID to this element that is class rush. Suddenly it used to be class Nickelback, and I'm going to add in an ID top for it. I do that directly here by adding and modifying the attributes. You got your picture? Oh, you got some snarky shit on me. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> All right, so let's get field and attributes to kitchen the three. So remember this, four different elements to do that stuff. So let's see what we can do with that. Because um, we want to do something like this. We have field items, field labels, because I mean, this is how we can actually describe each, each part. Um, this is, you know what BEM is? Uh, okay, some of you. Okay, so the idea is that you have a, a basic class up here. That's the field. And then we have these two underscores that this is a very specific element. And same thing here. So I know this is fields. So field is belonging to that. This is my item, and this is my label. So when I read my CSS later on, I can actually begin to understand just by reading my CSS what actually goes on. Um, so if I have multiple items, I'm going to wrap them inside, have a wrapper on it. The reason I want to have a wrapper on it is so now I can bend to move it around. This is how Drupal Core puts it out. This is how Classy puts it out. If you want to do something else, Go ahead and take the field template, overwrite that, and do whatever you want. Um, so if you want to fix the markup, we can do that. Um, so let's, let's look at this. This is my field, and this is how it looks directly out the box. You know, here you can see where it comes from. It does the, all the field items, blah, 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 blah. Of course I don't want to have that. I want to have beautiful markup that I have decided because I've written all the stuff. I know how it should look. I know how it should work. And if this is no field just with data in it, it should be in you know, an unordered list. So let's do that. Um, Mm, there's my other glass. Ah. You know, ta-da! Very exciting. We now made it into this. Now I want to remove the field items. This is where you figure out when you do this kind of recordings that you should remember to zoom in before you delete your original recording. So what happens outside is now me removing these classes. I know it's not very, very sneaky. Um, so let's see. Jump into the next one. The only thing I'm doing here is removing class. But here's here's the sexy thing. Let's add a library into this. So what the what the library does is now I have my have my bunch of elements, my lists. And as you remember that I talked about who oh, I have here a library called Field Magic, and it has a CSS file called Barcelona. Um, because I did this for DrupalCon in Barcelona as a little test. So my Barcelona CSS file has these you know, very exciting amount of of, of markup and CSS classes. Um, so what I do here is I do the attached library, and then I point that over to my Barcelona theme and give me that, that field thingy. So now I have you know, my a little underscore, underscore border, Jesus. As you can see on this page now, my Barcelona file, my Barcelona CSS is now added, but only to this field. If this field is printed, it's going to be added in. Um, let's begin to add some classes into it. So. As you can see here, I'm going really badass. I have a first and a last and a color blue and a color red and a color yellow. And yes, I do know there's something called first child. I do know there's something called last child. But let's say evil client want to have this to support you know, this dying browser called IE8. Oh, it's dumb cousin IE9. Also have some kind of learning disabilities, which by the way, on the 12th of January will no more be selected. So we don't have to think about fucking around with IE9 or 10. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm a little bit excited about that. Anyways, so let's, let's look at this, what can happen. So here's my, my ex very exciting um, CSS file. has very exciting colors in it. Um, first thing I do up here, I, I do a cycle on it. I say, okay, if you have this list, I want to do odd and even on it. So add in red and yellow on it, on each element, and put that in. No, oh, oh shit. No, it just goes through the say every every other element have when you do the cycle command, it takes all the different variables you put in and just put them out there. So if I have my class elements, you'll set colors, and you can see there it says add colors. Boom. That's the same variable. Now we go crazy. Loop.first. What do you think loop.first does? Yes, it takes the first element and puts something on it. So we can like make that pretty, pretty pinky. Um, and loop last, we're going to add in the last class. Um, 
uh, let's see what we can do here. Loop index. What loop index does, it counts on each element. And it used surprisingly amount of logic. So if you do a count on one, that means it takes the first element, because this is built for front-enders who is used to count like a normal human being, instead of a developer who's going like, OK, let's, let's on three, zero, one, two. Like, nope. We actually start at one, because this is built for normal human beings. Um, so as you can see now, now I've added in these different, these different classes as I needed them at the point. We can do any, even dumber things. Let's say that I want to change the complete everything that comes out uh, when, I, when I hit on eight. Let's just stop my little video here. So this is, this is, the, this is the eight um, part of, of my little list. Um, so I go, if this loop index is eight, when is it going to come out? Um, so the very last thing I have this if else, if else, uh, if else, you know, remember to print out the last one if you don't hit any of the others, because that's how you break your own theme. I might have done that more than once, and even when I did the first recording of this. So it took me two recordings, because sometimes I'm an idiot. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, you know, I'm just going to change completely what comes out of this list of data if I'm on eight. If this is the eighth element on it, you know, I'm going to explain to people when Drupal 8 is going to come out. When it's Dries' birthday, apparently. Ta-da! So, as, as you can see now, that we suddenly have a surprising amount of control of actually what happens on a specific field when we want to do that. And we can count on it, we can taste on it, we can even, you can even go in and test on, va on values on it and say, well, if the data that comes out of it says Morton is the greatest in the world, you know, print a little crown. You can test, taste on your data. So now your theme files have all this awesome logic built in that you can do stuff with. Um, and this is my, just my for loop for it, and this is kind of the basic thing I'm using when I'm doing this. You can even do a count backwards, ref index. Um, and this, yeah, it looks a little bit complicated at first, but it's pretty goddamn sweet to do stuff. Um, attach the library, you do like this. So the thing you're going to be, you know, when you build Drupal 8 themes is you're going to just think in constant in libraries. You're going to have a base library that has you know, all your basic elements, and then you're going to have other libraries based on what kind of pages that you want to put inside of your theme. Here's another cool thing. How much? Uh, I still got, yeah, I've got to hurry it up because, yeah. Twig blocks. This is some pretty awesome shit. So one of the things that drives me bad shit in, in, in Drupal is if I have six different layouts in a page, because suddenly we have that, and we didn't use, we didn't use context, so we didn't use display suite, we didn't use panels, so we're doing all the templates. So suddenly you can end up having very variations of, of templates that has almost the same markup. We don't want to have that. What we can do now is we can define a block inside of a template to not make anybody confused and to not try to start a new, like, never-ending bike shit in Drupal core and say, hey, we should also call this block and then rename blocks in Drupal to something else. This is from now on known as a trick block, um, at least in the Drupal world. What it does is it says, I can define a part of my template that can be exchanged with another template. So you don't overwrite the whole template, you just overwrite a little bit, bit of it. So let's say if I'm on my front page and I want to be able to do something there, if I'm on, a, uh, if, if I'm on the front page, I want to put in you know, a specific a hero image or, you know, uh, hooray, you came to my front page. If I want to do that, I can do that with the extents command. So what I do there is, is on my page HTML trick, I explain that. So let's, let's look at that in a piece of code. This is a very advanced theme I wrote a long time ago. We called it Ada at a hotel in Amsterdam. So this, <laughs> this says a lot about why this is named Morton DK is awesome. Um, so it has a class in it, and let's see. Trick block, no, let's call it green. Yes. Um, so, so what we're doing here, the idea here is like we're taking a block and say this part is a thing we can change around if another template is getting called. So you, remember those like template suggestions we had? That's what you're going to use here as well. So your template suggestions are going to be like your next best friend. Um, you know, so here I'm on my front page. You know, it says, hi, I'm a, a trick block. That's all, all good. Go in and expect the element. Figure out, OK, what's, my, what's the template names I'm using here? Ah, there's one called page front, page dash dash front. Um, so I can use that. 
If I use this template, now Drupal will know, oh, if I hit the front page, I should use this template. But by using my extend command, I'm now explaining to it, you're just gonna take this little part of it and only exchange that part. So now you can begin to inject stuff into your different, you can do that on a field template, you can do it on a block template, you can do it everywhere you have. You know, a very common part of markup that you wanna repeat over and over and over again. You don't wanna have it multiple places. That's when this begins to become really, really useful. You don't wanna overdo this because your brain is gonna melt if you have too many templates. Um, so what I'm doing here is, this is almost two years old, by the way, so this is why back then you had to write the whole path, which you know, I constantly forgot about, and this is where I cut. Uh, yes, I had recorded the new video, which I <laughs> couldn't find the name for the fields. Let's see here, uh, we're almost done. All right, so here we go. So you can actually see it works. Let me go to the note. Ta-da! Tat. <laughs> oh. See, what drives me most bad here is nobody lifted an eyebrow when I showed you how you can completely remove divisions and change all the markup and every goddamn feel like, why is that so special? Because some, somebody said to me in San Francisco when I gave it, it's like, why don't you react? And I said, you know, like, because it makes sense. This is how it always should be. It's like, exactly, we have used way too much common sense for this. Um, so, Job security, goddammit. Okay, so apparently you're not entertained. So here is like one of the, this is my Steve Jobs moment. One other feature we put in, which I think is pretty rad, is this. This is screenshot part 2.0. So, uh, you know, we have a screenshot we can define now. You don't have to just do it as a JPEG file. You can do it as a PNG. So you can do this. Finally, this is, this is the killer feature. This is the thing that's gonna take over everything. This is gonna be the thing that's gonna drive us bad shit. We have 10 different themes loaded in that each have 100 kilo of previewing of their themes. It, it can become a fun feature with, with time. Here's another thing. You know what this is? This is the menu template. The menu template. Not templates, no, no, tem plate yeah no more three templates and five four or five theme functions how many do we have four theme functions. and by the way the link was always pre-rendered just to make sure you could not do anything with it unless you did like me use regular expressions directly inside of my theme just to make sure that stuff got really good yes exactly Ooh. um and there's somebody who there, i saw a blog post i don't know who it was but check out i know we're using zero up here but don't because what you can actually do here is you can actually taste on the level on it and you can now begin to move around down into your, into, your, into your different levels of your menu and add in the classes, add in the stuff you actually want to have in. Even more awesome, each menu has its own template. So if you want to override a specific template, say main menu should have this markup, my sub menus should have that markup. If it's on the third level, it should be called green. If it's on the second level, it should be called blue. If all of the, if it's the second level and it's the link number four, you know, I don't even print the link anymore. I put in a big image of dancing dudes instead. You can do all that, not from a fucking module, not from configuration your ass into hell, by one fucking template directly inside of your theme, and you can lift your finger directly up to the veil and be like, yo, what up, bro? <laughs> Here's the next one. Pages, remember pages? Fun for everybody, right? When your client came in like, can you change the page and how it looks? And you're like, <laughs> yeah, I can, but it's gonna cost you a for fortune. Nope, we have this wonderful little thing right now, yes. This is why we figured out that we need to protect ourselves from ourselves because this is one of the things we never cleaned up. This is the, we have now only one template for pages. This beautiful template. We maybe should clean this up. This is why we have stable and classy because Lawi has been lazy for the last two years and traveling around the world instead of doing what I've asked him to do on our weekly trick meetings and say Lawi fix stuff and he only breaks stuff. Not completely true. Um, so, if you want to get into this Drupal, oh, five minutes. If you want to get into this, uh, I started to build a theme now called Vanilla. And the idea behind Vanilla theme is, 
I want to find a theme where I can actually experiment with all of these things, grabbing each variable out, figuring out what we've done wrong and not done wrong. So if you want to play around with that, uh, it's up on, up on D.O. Well, it's actually really not up on D.O. There's a project on D.O. that has a link over to GitHub because I like pull requests. I don't like to do that crap we do on D.O. So uh, if you want to play along with me here or just download the code and see what I've done, there's a lot of like internal to do. Why do we do this dumb stuff over here? We should change this and that. Well, come over and play with this. Um, it's for the middle of the theme. And it has a ton of also like little snippets of different things that I have accumulated of knowledge about how to work with this inside of Drupal and also find like, oh crap, why are we doing this? Um, so if you completely fall asleep, it's only one sleeping right now. <laughs> Um, and, and you really didn't listen. So we've killed support for IE 7, 8, 6, 7, and 8, um, which is awesome. Hooray. Uh, but HTML5, CSS, Smack, and BEM names, modern practice, we removed all IDs. There's one ID left, um, which is for the, for the uh, uh, accessibility link. Um, 7 is responsive. Hooray. I don't know. So apparently that's JavaScript. We have separated JavaScript out so we don't accidentally kill JavaScript functionality just because you want to redefine all your classes, um, we pretty much removed 90% of the markup. I have not made the exact weight of it because when that patch came in, I leaned back and I've not done shit for the last two months. I must be honest about that. It took two years. And I was like, I'm done. Um, jQuery dependencies also removed. You know, stable and classy completely separates our markup from core. Well, I say completely, I might might lie a little bit. Um, of course, there's still things around. One of the things that have been our problem is that we have not built enough with this yet. And that's why we really need, now we have a stable version now, Drupal 8.0. We need some funders to come in and play with this and figure out all the dumb stuff. Um, Seven Abotic is both internal. Don't base your themes on that unless you clone it all out and move it to your own theme because that will change. That is, we want to be, we want to make Drupal better and we don't want to have people coming yelling at us and whining about why did you change this in seven? Now my, my stuff over here is broken because they are internal, so copy them out. Um, another thing is, I know I've been yelling a lot, a lot the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shit, since I was at a DrupalCon in Brussels nine years ago, I yelled a lot about this, um, but um, this group of fantastic people have somehow um, jumped in with me in this queue and listen to me rant for the last, I don't know, at least three years. I don't know how they could stand it, um, but um, I'm very grateful for them. Um, if you want to join the wonderful Twig army, because we need more people to die in an issue queue, um, as you can see, this is me and Joel. This is back in March 2014, where we both is like scratching our hair and trying to figure out what goes on. But on Thursdays each week on IRC, we have our weekly meeting. Uh, which is actually a Google Hangout. There's both a Google Hangout you can participate in. There's also a Google Hangout where you can just listen to whatever we talk about. One of the things we hope to do, or at least me as an old political scheming, like gray eminence, I mean, I'm the small version of Littlefinger, um, is that we really want to be, uh, start to think in the front end as a kind of a product or a kind of a way of saying, this is the way we're going to go. This is what we're going to do for Drupal 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4. .8 so front end does know what they can expect from the front end. And that requires that somebody takes charge on this. And what we figured out is like, if our Drupal trick group, if we take a decision on something, I'm pretty sure it's going to be something. So what we really want to do, first of all, we want to have more people to come in and join. But we're also going to be way more like try to pop this out. Say this is the way we want to push the front end. These are the things you can expect to happen. These are things that needs to happen because you know, we know that a lot of people have not touched Drupal 8 yet, and it's probably going to go like five, six, seven months before you're going to be really into it. And at that point, we have a lot of knowledge that if you know somebody should take charge on it. So that's probably how it's going to go. Because um, I can say it just as, as it is right now that. Two things that sucks major balls in Drupal 8, at least from my perspective, is how image templates get written out. We have five templates to define um, an image, which is a pain in the ass. The reason for that is that we converted all template functions directly to a file. So this is just things we haven't cleaned up yet. So that's stuff we need to figure out. How can we make the theming experience, how can we make themes 
easier and better to write. That's kind of one of the things that is, is very, very high up on the list, um, which I'm pretty sure that the rest of the group of our little trick army is really tired of hearing me bitching and nagging and moaning about all this stuff. But this is actually how we got the menu template to become one template. Um, another thing is the big distribution that comes out, you know, something like commerce, panels, layout, all these things. We need front enders to come in and help these guys out because basically, if you're back in develop, if, if you put me in to do any kind of development, I mean, this is how I do a select statement. Select star from table, done. Here's my data, fuck off. You know, that's how I do that stuff. We need people who's good in front end to come and help out the developers in Drupal to build it the right way. We need to educate each other. We need to take responsibility. We now have a solid group of 10, 12 developers who works in the front end, but we need more people to come in because a lot of this work is also just reviewing patches, helping out, getting your voice known, coming back and say, hey, what we actually should do is this. You know, Christian over here came and yelled at me two years ago. He was like, why? don't we just separate all this stuff out? And that point, I was about to give up that fight. It's like, so when I came home, it was like, fuck you guys, we're gonna separate this shit out. So and I went to San Francisco and, and web chicks were like, nope, we're not gonna put any other themes in. Two years later, <laughs> two new themes in, and we got that motherfucker separated out. Um, Cause Drupal 7 is a shame. I think as a front ender, it's, I'm not happy, let me put it that way. Uh, I'm happy for all the work that got put in. And the reason for that is like, at that point when we built Drupal 7, there was one person who were working for the front end. It was John, who's pretty much the only one. I mean, we have been 10 people on this now for, actually been more than two, we have been 10 core people. Then we have people who came in and out. You know, Miguel had died at least twice in the issue queue. We'd be like, fuck it, I'm not gonna do any core work in again. this simply too much. But, it requires a lot of work. We want to make that easier. We want to make that faster. So that's a thing. Another thing is on Frontend United is uh, going to come back in a big way. We have had Frontend United the last couple of years. If you don't know what Frontend United is, it's actually it's a Frontend based Drupal uh, camp, that's conference, where we try to look at new Frontend technologies. But now when we come out with Drupal 8, we're also gonna be very, very focused on how to build and do stuff in Drupal 8. Um, and it's gonna be in Ghent in, in Belgium in the end of May. I got little stickers. Some, so I hope, hope you guys will bring with you. What we're actually gonna do with this, we are gonna put in training as well because we know that Drupal 8 is you know, a big jump for a lot of people. Like, how should I do this? So it's, it's another thing. We want to put training in, put a lot of session in where we're actually going to discuss these things and figure out what should be our next move because Funded and United have actually been a very important part of this. I mean, this goes three years back when we were in Amsterdam and we started this whole journey of getting Twig in. That was the first time we talked about that. So I know I talked for an hour and three minutes and you're probably like, God fucking damn it, Morton, do you ever gonna stop talking? I have more slides, no worry about that. But uh, you know, uh, if you use Twitter, put in questions, use the hashtag Drupal trick, because um, a lot of us core developers follows that hashtag. It's also where we put stuff out. Um, if you have questions, comments, feedbacks, hate mail, wanna you know, walk my dog, you know, something gonna spank me with a with a bat because of too many templates. No, just yell at me at Twitter. I'm pretty responsive there. Um, I am actually not the angry theme anymore. I'm pretty happy. Oh, yeah. No worries. I'm going to be pissed off or something else. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm taking up vanilla CSS, just to have something else to rant about, right? Um, so my slides, this is the same slides as I had back and, uh, when I went to, um, to Bad Camp a month ago. Um, so the slides is up there, tinyurl.com slash divitisbadcamp15. If you want to see it again in another video on in DrupalCon in Barcelona, there's an earlier version of this as well. That was right before we got RC1 out. We are not sorry it was our fault we didn't get RC1 out because, hey, that's how it is. Um, but you can see this session again. Theme guide for Drupal 8, Drupal Org theme guide 8, coding standards, CSS. Uh, explains everything of why we have done this as we have done. Here's the thing, when you build your themes, you do not have to follow these code standards because the theme is your theme. It's not this forced in by evil Drupal, it's your theme, you can build with your theme as you want to. Wanna learn more about Smacks? Go and do that. It's essential knowledge for any frontenders. Um, if you wanna read up on the documentation on Twig, it's really goddamn simple. 
Twig Central Labs, org slash documentation. There's a one pager you can read there. Uh, but it's way more valuable just to play around with it. Download my vanilla theme. There's a, I have like a one pager that has all that crap in it where you can like figure out how to do stuff. Vanilla, and yes, of course I drew the logo was the first thing because that's how it's done. Um, my setup video of how to get your whole things, how to get set up, how to make your local environment work, youtube.com slash modern DK rocks because somebody took modern DK. Um, there's also videos. I've, there's a lot of videos of front enders discussing stuff. So if you want to follow the history from the last three years of us discussing things, you can also follow a lot of these videos there. They're really not interesting for anybody at this point. Um, but they're there. Uh, let me see. Um, normally, I get this question, what kind of fonts did I use? Because apparently, that's the question people want to give me. And this is that god fucking damn it. Three years of this, and this is the question, is what kind of fonts I use? Thanks for that. That is Daft Gross, Draw Shop, and Bitter. Um, icons is small icon set I used. Um, but yeah, yell at me on Twitter. I'm Morton DK. And if you have any questions, um, Happy to yell at them at me. Else, we have a bar tonight, right? Isn't that an official party? So uh, we know whether that's actually where we should do the real questions. I have a, a truckload of uh, the Epic Skull and Funded United stickers. And you know, thank you for not yelling at me. So now, actually, any questions? See, I always do that. <laughs> there. Well, it's pretty easy to add a div. You just write it in. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do it on screen. No, fuck no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that because it's it's an example. It's instead of your data attributes, Morton, Morton is something. is an idiot or whatever you did at some, some point. No stuff. OK, so on RC, we have our group Drupal Dash Twig. Drupal Dash Twig have been the developer group so far. We've been talking a lot of this. And it's, it's more or less like 10 people just sitting in there and like talking crap. We know each other a lot. But come in anyways and ask the questions, because that's actually where people who have worked with us or designed this, a lot of these questions is also like, you know, why did you do it? Why is it built this way? There's a reason why we built that. Another thing that I've heard from multiple People ask me, like, can you give me best practice of this? That will come out pretty, quote unquote, soon. Because um, a lot of these things was designed in a specific way. It's not designed to do all your class names in a pre-process. Actually, you should move as little stuff as possible inside of your theme theme file and as much stuff inside of your, if you're inside of your trick file. That is how it's designed. But there will be. Hopefully, in 10, 11 days, I will get my blog up and begin to post all of these, like, this is why we did this, this is why we do that. Because if you get the background for it, it also makes it like so much clearer. What we hope to do is build a theme system that is built for front-enders by front-enders, so we don't have this whole, like, why is my stuff so broken? Why can I do this? Why can I do that? And there's probably going to there's still stuff that's broken. We know that. But we can now change them because we got stable and classy in there. So there's another question. Yeah, so contributed modules, what we hope to do, because we know a lot of contributed modules don't do this stuff yet. They have just like added the class in. So what we really hope can be done is that module developers, first of all, grab this idea of putting stuff inside of templates and put the classes in. And that's why we really want to have all of you front enders, which I guess a lot of you in this room, to help out your poor developers and come in and help them and say, hey, do it this way instead. Why? Because we need that. But if they've put in a class that you don't want, you can do you can do the attributes dot remove class and then remove that class. So the, the whole way you control your classes now is inside of your template file. That's where it all goes around. Yeah. Uh, it's actually inside of the block which makes it even more. The block template is actually using Twig blocks, uh, um, which 
I personally don't think it's necessary. I think it's more because we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do a lot of dumb things in the first version coming out. Um, so when you build new things and you build stuff, if you have a blog, you no, know, post what you do, write that out, share that knowledge. Because, I mean, a lot of you guys have no idea what you're going to do right now. I mean, I've been in it for like at least three years. You know, Lowry has been in for like 2.8 years or whatever. So a lot of us have been down this road for a long while. You know, you're going to do a lot of dumb things, but if you share these dumb things and figure out, oh, I did it wrong, or there was somebody, I, I, I saw a blog post somewhere where somebody was trying to figure out how do I add in, you know, CSS files from you know, um, Google funds. How do I do that? Well, there's ways to do that, but if you don't ask the questions, we can't answer them. So put it out on blog post, make sure it gets out on Drupal Planet so we can begin to find all these things so we can write the documentation. The documentation is getting better, but so when you find these questions, how do I do this? You know, let's figure out how to do it and let's put it in the documentation so new people can find it. Because documentation in Drupal 7 was not built by front end. It was built by developers who wrote a very technical way of how you build a theme. We want to get away from that. We want to make sure that theming is something that, you know, the old school, I mean, I've been in this industry for 19 years. And when I started, I was not a webmaster. I was something way fucking cooler. I was a web designer. And that's kind of like we could ask, you can become a web designer too now. You don't have to be a themer. Web designer, that's like old school where it's at. Yo. All right. Um, I will not keep you away from alcohol. I will, uh, if no more questions, thank you for coming. <laughs> and yes, stickers and stuff.